Entering into a wild follows the same process as entering into ordinary random dreaming. The only difference being that via wilds one enters into that dreaming state consciously and deliberately instead of unconsciously and accidentally. Fall asleep as normal and at some point you'll have normal random dreams, something that genuinely makes the dill version of lucid dreaming so very difficult to put into practice. Enter into the dream state consciously, however, as is the case with wilds, and that dreaming state is experienced in a completely different way, as lucid dreams with full waking awareness right from the start, and with the added bonus of experiencing no interruption to one's stream of waking awareness. It takes a little practice to prolong the experience upon having arrived in a lucid dreaming state. A slight mistake here, or an emotional wobble there, and you're automatically and involuntarily booted out of the while back to the looking at hypnagogia stage again. This abrupt change of perspective is often accompanied by a fairly startly zinging sensation, which is, of course, immediately followed by no! upon realizing that you've again dropped the ball. This is something that, somewhat frustratingly, happens time and again until you eventually learn to strike a very particular and peculiar mental and emotional balance which we'll look into and discuss right now. So okay, you've learned and practiced the simple enough relaxation exercises. More importantly, you've learned not to move around at all while doing them until you began to consciously enter into the first stages of sleep. You've then consciously and deliberately paused there for a while and played around with hypnagogia until the first in a series of particularly sharp images begins to appear. Fairly soon, increasingly vivid images start to appear. Well done, because now you're ready to go on to the third stage. By now, you should be seeing hypnagogic image after image in fairly rapid succession. Wait until a particularly clear one shows up and attempt to examine its details. Just keep doing this even if the image fades or changes into another one. That's okay. Just let it happen. The main thing at this point is to be consciously selecting from among the clearest and most vivid images that appear the one you're going to attempt to examine. This is the practice because somewhere along the line of attempting to do this something rather amazing and miraculous happens. At one moment you'll be gazing at some image and probably marvelling at just how clear and vivid it really is this time when, without any warning whatsoever, there's that zing feeling again only this time it all goes the other way and you're literally pulled right into a fully fledged lucid dreaming scenario. Chances are you'll be so surprised by this that you'll be booted straight back out. Okay, Don't. let's keep things light-hearted and have another go. Stare at that next incredibly clear image that's just turned up. Begin deliberately examining its finer details and before you know it, zing! you're powerfully pulled right back into another, or even the same, dreaming scene. You look around a bit. You realize yet again that you're actually wilding. You try your best this time not to overreact anyway, but it's just so exciting. It's really happening. No! So okay, let's have another go. You're back in. You're straight back out again. No! Each time it happens, however, it's as though you're learning a little more, then a little more, and then a little bit more and so on until the moment arrives that you're in a lucid dream long enough to attempt doing something other than flitting back and forth between lying down awake and wilding. Now then, this is the opportunity to have your first full and proper wild for real, something which is achieved once started by literally turning on one's heel both mentally and emotionally so to speak and instead of pondering upon what's happening to you and how marvellous it all is you just turn on your heel and go off exploring. You kept those images in view by deliberately examining their details and then you even allowed yourself to be pulled right into one of them and now here you are standing in a fully fledged lucid dream 
only you really don't know what to do with yourself next or how to control it. This is so cool. The point is that, after all your hard work, which wasn't really so hard after all, was it? Right here at this juncture and or point of departure is where the real journey and practice of lucid dream discovery begins. Furthermore, you can also rest assured that from now on, the transition between waking and lucid dreaming will only improve and get faster the more you do it, until eventually, and with very little practice and with only a few minutes of lying down, you'll be straight off into a world with almost no bother at all. This, incidentally, is precisely the way it should be done if your dream state is to be genuinely enjoyed, explored and mapped. At this point in the learning curve, wilding becomes merely a choice one makes, and after getting into the right state of relaxation, you can step off into a dream which you can see right there waiting for you. Alternatively, you can lean the other way that leads back to lying down awake in bed, or, rather interestingly, you can even hold back at a kind of midway point that is neither awake nor dreaming and from which point of view you can now see both options as existing equally. This middle ground is something that was initially overlooked in favour of immediately leaping into full wilds. Anyway, be that as it may, reaching this midway point and acknowledging its existence is an important development that needs to be investigated further and we'll definitely come back to this subject in a later tutorial. The main thing for now is that you've now begun, at last, to be able to get into a wild almost, but not quite yet, on demand. Rest assured, however, the more you accomplish wilding, the more it happens. Almost as if with practice, an inner barrier within ourselves suddenly falls under the impact of actually having these experiences. In wilds, the world appears as it always has and does. There was ground and sky, along with all the familiar objects of the daily world, which, to all intents and purposes, are almost exactly the same as in the waking world. The only real difference between them being the way one has to relearn to conduct oneself in either state. One's emotional and mental reaction to things has to be slightly modified in those dream worlds, almost as if they demand a kind of emotional and mental detachment from them. The fact of the matter is that we already know all there is to know about this whole process of falling asleep and waking up again. Having done so all our lives, it's become completely second nature to us. Moreover, we unquestionably accept the symptoms and effects going in both directions as being normal, particularly those of falling asleep and having ordinary, chaotic, commonplace dreams. Enter into dreaming consciously from the point of view of already being awake, however, and it all becomes a completely different ball game. Oh yes, it certainly does. Being awake changes everything. Effectively, upon entering into a world, one is deliberately quelling the rational mind in favour of observing and examining the details of whatever one is confronted with, instead of focusing on what one might normally think or feel about. Thus one learns to accept things rather than judging them and being forced to react accordingly, depending on what one has already learned to do. It's really as simple as that. What is not simple, however, is to adapt these otherwise already ingrained reactions and responses to ordinary situations and things, which is why, in the initial stages at least, and paradoxically so, we regularly get booted out, not in spite of, but rather because of them. In the next tutorial, we'll examine the varying levels of lucidity that can be attained and the differences between them. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this instruction intriguing and inspiring and would like to learn more. In which case, please subscribe to this channel and or check back soon for the next video update in this series. Anyway, bye for now to see you soon in part 5 levels of lucidity see ya